welcome or welcome back to episode three, three of Falling Into Fall. I'm your host, Gabrielle. Welcome or welcome back. I hope you all enjoy episode two, which was strictly about shoes. We went over every possible shoe that you can possibly think of for the fall season, gym shoes, different types of gym shoes, mules, boots, different type of boots loafers different type of loafers you name it we covered it so today is about not outerwear but for me i do consider it outerwear but i know a lot of people think like jackets and coats and things like that and vests are outerwear or for me blazers sweaters or like cardigan style sweaters jackets and different types of jackets and jackets i'm not saying jackets i'm saying jackets with an s and y'all know that it's like a shirt and a jacket. So you can wear it buttoned up as a shirt or you can also wear it open as a jacket and put on a layering piece. So blazers is obviously gonna be incorporated in this blog as well. Um, I'm not really big on blazers. I don't have many blazers, but I do at least try to have like a few of a basic style blazer that can pretty much go with anything. And I feel like having at least one or two blazers is a staple in your wardrobe because you can also wear them like over your shoulder when you have on a dress sometimes in the summertime just to cover you up maybe in a restaurant or some type of event. Um, and then I also feel like you should have a staple. And when I say staple, I mean a base. A base is like what I have on underneath which is like a mock neck turtleneck style shirt in a basic color and it can pretty much go with everything. I tend to at least put on a long sleeve shirt that's a basic color. Um, I also put on hoodies up under my blazers, so, or, and even cardigans. So it just kind of depends on your style. Me personally, mm, I don't know what my, my style is just my style. I wouldn't say I have like this type of style. I do like more of an edgy, modern, um, chic, kind of look that's what I tend to gravitate to so yeah I mean you know that's just <laughs> what it is but like I said sometimes I do tend to put like hoodies up under my and I prefer the zip up hoodie so when I do put a hoodie on I prefer the zip up hoodie versus the hoodie that has the pockets it just makes it look like number one is made into the blazer or the cardigan so yeah that's just my little small take but Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video and we're gonna start with the obvious. We're gonna start with blazers. I have this black blazer on. I have on some oversized jeans, which we all know the oversized jean look is all the things right now, which I honestly feel like if you were born in my era, which I grew up in the 90s, that was our thing. We, the Carl Kanai, the cross colors, y'all know that was like the thing. We wore the baggy jeans down. So, and we used to wear ours with like the underwear label showing at the top. If you had that kind of stomach, girl, I didn't. So I wasn't wearing it, but I always tend to gravitate when I think of baggy jeans towards that style because I just loved it so, so much. And I still do. Um, so I'm happy that people are now catching on with the baggy look and learning different ways to wear it. Yeah, this blazer is, you know, it's an oversized blazer. You can pull the sleeves down and wear it as such, which there's no problem wearing it like this. I feel like this is the more classic, the more traditional way to wear a blazer because you're just putting it on. But if you wanted to give it your own little, like, you know, your own little thing, your own little style, your own unique flavor. You just slouch the sleeves up and then kind of have like, you know, whatever shirt you have coming through. I feel like that then gives it like a sporty look. And then for this outfit, what I would also do is maybe put like a couple of brooches or something on the lapels. Um, and pretty much that's it. I, that's This would be an outfit for me if I were going anywhere, gym shoes, boots, you name it. It's just an oversized blazer with some oversized pants. You can't go wrong. You need a black blazer, at least a black blazer in your wardrobe. So we're going to kind of run through this fairly fast because I felt like the last video lasted way too long. <laughs> so the next blazer I have, which I showed you all, which is a little bit more tailored to the waist and it is from Target. So let's jump right into it. This blazer 
is a good blazer. This blazer is from Target and like you can see how it's a little bit more tailored into the waist. This is a doggone good blazer for like 30 something dollars. I think it might've been $35 or $38. I really am considering going back and getting this in gray, but see how I put like, it's just a staple color. Like I, I did this purposely because I knew that the way I would style each one of like the cardigans or blazers that I put on, I would just have on a neutral base shirt. And a beige shirt, you really can't go wrong. It's the blazer is long enough to wear like, it's just giving you like that classic chic look. I just feel like a blazer just like gives everything a little edge. Not edgy, not in an edgy way, but I feel like, well, it's more chic. But if you can get your hands on this blazer, this is a damn good blazer <laughs> from Target for the price. And the fit is good. I got mine in an extra large. And I just love the way it looks with oversized jeans. Now, me preferably, I would prefer, if I'm going to wear a blazer, I honestly would like my pants to be just plain. No holes, no rips, no nothing. It just gives it a more mature look and it just brings out like the interest in the blazer versus, and this is just my opinion, I feel like if you have holes or rips or anything in your jeans, now with the exception of like maybe like a hole in the knee, like one slit in the knee I think is good enough if you wanna just, you know, play that play that off, you know, to just putting a one. But I feel like having nothing just gives it a bit more of a classy, cleaner look. But I'm not against, for me, I'm not against if my jeans that would have just like the rips on the knee, either one knee or both knees, I'm not against that look. But I love this blazer, y'all. Y'all have to get your hands on this blazer from Target. I'm actually probably going to run to Target today and see if they have the gray one because I just think it's just that good. It's oversized without being sloppy. Yeah. But again, a staple. You need a blazer. Okay, so I know what y'all thinking. Pink, fall, eh, what? <laughs> but think about it. Everybody tends to give like the, dra the the drabby colors in fall. We tend to go for the blacks and the browns, the more darker colors. This particular like color is more vibrant, but not being too much. It's just adding a little something to your outfit. Now this blazer is super old from Target, I'm uh, from Zara. And this is another one of those more tailored style in the waist, but it has a more dramatic, shoulder pad so it kind of like plays off of like it gives like be balenciaga like if y'all seen some of balenciaga uh blazers they have the more dramatic shoulder pads i think that's why i'm kind of showing you different styles of blazers because depending on your own personal style would depends on the type of blazer you choose and as you can see i like all three I was so against shoulder pads for so many years because I'm a little heavier as far as in the chest. So I didn't like things to exaggerate the top half of my body. And I'm not like small at the top or big at the top and small at the bottom. I don't have that type of shape, but I am, like I said, I'm more busty. So I feel like sometimes with women like myself who have bigger chests, things that are bigger at the top gives us the illusion of being bigger at the top. But I like the fact that this blazer is tapered here in the waist, so it shapes everything out. But again, it goes so well into your fall wardrobe because it's just an added layering piece. That's all blazers are, are just an added layering piece. And even in the, even in the springtime, I feel like if you can find a nice linen one, like a linen blazer, those are nice too. But as soon as we're into fall, yes, this is a nice one. And I have worn this in the summertime with shorts and I would do the same look. And voila. See the difference with slouching up the sleeves? One gives traditional, one gives modern. I actually, as I was going through my things, I forgot I even had this, I guess it's a blazer. Um, it is a blazer style 
but it's longer, but the style of it is like a blazer. It's a little bit more on the cotton side. Well, it is on the cotton side versus being like the typical, I guess, not not rayon, but I'm sometimes, well, I guess they're all cotton, but this is not like your typical material when it comes to a blazer, but it's worn in the same way as a blazer. I got this from Nordstrom Rack years and years and years ago, y'all. But it's almost like a jacket, but it does have a split in the back. I just haven't um, removed the, the thread that keeps it together. But I honestly forgot about this and I've never even worn it. But I would still wear this in the same manner that I would wear a blazer. But it's again, it's just an added layering piece to an outfit. I'm not sure if you can even find, I'm sure you can probably nowadays find something like this, but I felt like this was a good added, um, you know, to the blazer section. I feel like this was good to add to the section of blazers, but it's almost given like lab coat, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> so I thought I'd share. All right, now let's get into cardigan. So this is actually one of like my top five to 10 cardigans because it has a hood. Because it has a hood and it's kind of chunky, but it's not super thick. It looks like it would be thick, but honestly y'all, this is not thick. I will wear it today. So the next three cardigans that I'm gonna show you are cardigans that I will wear in spite of it being 83 degrees today. The only difference or only way that I would judge it up is I would just put on a short sleeve t-shirt or if you feeling froggish and you wanna leap into back into a tank top, you can also do that and just have the cardigan on because we still want to incorporate the fall season in our fall wardrobe even though it feels like summer. But there's a way to do it. This is just one of those cardigans that is a staple in your wardrobe. You can put or put it on again, turtleneck, like I have it worn here. You can wear it however you choose, but I think it's good to have a nice chunky style cardigan that's maybe not too, too thick, and especially one that have a hood. I rarely see cardigans that have hoods, so when I found this one and the color was a neutral color, I was like, oh, I'm not leaving it. I'm not leaving it. It's long enough where it gives enough coverage. It's a neutral color so it can be worn with pretty much anything but the hood was the added bonus <laughs> the added freaking bonus so let's get into the next two that i will wear in 80 degree weather i guess so <laughs> this cardigan the reason i will wear it in 80 degree weather if you can't tell it has all of these like holes and rips and things like that all in it so it's not you know, necessarily to keep you warm, but you can always slouch the sleeves up. Um, you can wear it with leggings and that's another way. Don't always feel like you gotta wear jeans with cardigans or skirts with cardigans or slacks with cardigans. The whole like elevated active wear or the ele elevated leisure wear, you can elevate a active wear set with a cardigan and a gym shoe and it just gives it a more like lax, casual, elevated look. So that's just kind of my little tip. I know you've all seen that look several times, but you know, just thought I'd give you a little something, something <laughs> if you have it. But yeah, so this is, like I said, one that I will wear on a day like today. I would just put on a short sleeve t-shirt, white V-neck t-shirt to kind of bring like a little bit of coolness because it's, honest, it's honestly too warm to have this many layers on. But again, a V-neck t-shirt, short sleeve, white, some jeans, some gym shoes, or even some slides because you can still wear open toe shoes now. So you can put on a cute little slide, a cute little sandal and be good to go and still kind of bring it in your fall wardrobe without overdoing it, without feeling like you just doing too much with the fall wardrobe and it's not time yet. Yeah, get you a cardigan and maybe have a little couple rips or a little couple holes or something like that, that you can just, you know, throw on on these 
crazy funny days if you live here in Georgia or Florida or wherever your climate is and it just haven't totally transitioned into fall, girl, girl, throw you on a little holy cardigan. So you know that the Bohemian style is like all the rage this year. Chloe put us on the map when it came to the Bohemian style. Now I did get this sweater last year, I believe from Marshalls. But this is another one of those sweaters that as you can see, it has all the holes in it. It's not thick, it's not stuffy. So you can wear this with pretty much whatever. Um, and you can, you can transition it obviously into winter because you can put just on a thicker, you know, shirt. If it were like super cold outside and I wanted to wear one of these sweaters that has the holes in it, again, it's all about layering. So I will put on a shirt just like I have on now or maybe like a sweater knit type of turtleneck but then i will also put an undershirt on under this along with the cardigan and then i'm good to go i don't have the necessary need for a really thick big winter coat here in georgia is all about layering and that way you don't feel as hot and stuffy right so again with this sweater it's given bohemian it has the scalloped bottom it has the holes it's a neutral color it's not really gray it's almost like a taupe color but it goes with so many different things again a day like today if I had to or if I were wearing this sweater today easily throw on a v-neck t-shirt or a tank top you can throw on some leggings of course obviously you can wear jeans what you can't go wrong with a jean but again like you can just do so much with a cardigan without it being only for cold weather it's basically the point that i was getting or that i'm getting at when it comes to this style or these style cardigans like they're not thick they're not thin so you can wear them both on a warm day and you can wear them on the cooler days when it's like really really cool outside so again these are just inspos. These are just ideas for you all to kind of think about when shopping and having like staple pieces in your closet, things that you can just reach for whenever. That's how my mind thinking. Basically, I feel like that's what this series is doing is giving that. But we'll talk about a little bit more of that at the end of this video. Now let's go into cardigans that are strictly for the colder months. I will not wear any of the next cardigans that I'm about to show you will not be worn in cold. I mean, I'm sorry, will not be warm on an 80 degree weather. They are strictly for when it gets cold outside, okay? All right, y'all, so let's jump right into the next category. This sweater is up there in my top 10 of favorite sweaters. I absolutely love the color of this sweater. I love the Argyle print. I just love <laughs> this sweater. Now, let me tell you, I do have some faux leather shorts that I wear with this and they're like this lavender color. Now, I do tend to wear this like, I would wear this on a day like, mm, I wouldn't say like today. I would say maybe if it were like 70 or 75 degrees cause I still feel like you can get away with a sweater. But what I would do is roll it up and again, I would just wear either a tank top or just a short sleeve shirt underneath. So I know I said that these aren't sweaters that I will wear when it's warm, but because of how I like to wear this particular sweater or what I like to wear it with, or what I bought it to go with, I guess you can say, I would wear it when it's a little bit on the warmer side, but not as hot as 83 deg degrees. But I did pick this sweater up from Zara maybe two years ago. It was on clearance for like 39 bucks. And I think this sweater was regularly either 89 or 109. And I was so ecstatic when I was able to get my hands on this. Now I'm showing you all this sweater because again, I would wear it in a, in a 70 ish degree weather scenario. However, this is not your typical colors when it comes to fall. I am not one of those people who don't incorporate color in their, in their wardrobe. If you haven't noticed, I like color. I'm not, um, stuck on just like neutral tones and certain colors to be worn in the fall. That's never been me. It will never be me. I feel like you can wear color whenever you really want to. Like people used to say, oh, you can't wear white here. You get, girl, you wear whatever you want to wear when you want to wear it, okay? But I just feel like this sweater is just so pretty in its color. Like it's have the most soft but vibrant colors. The material is like this, 
I don't know, it's like a furry kind of like material, but the colors are just so pretty and vibrant. And you can just put it on with like a cream colored boot, which will be very nice if you wanted to wear it kind of how like I'm wearing it with a oversized jean. You can just incorporate, like I said, a, a cream color boot. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more zhuzhy, you can get you a pink boot. You can wear it with a white gym shoe. I would stick to like me personally, I would stick to a more monotone, like a more, you know, neutral color boot only because I feel like the sweater is already saying a lot. So I, again, for me personally, I will go with either a white gym shoe if I wanted to wear it with a gym shoe, or I would wear it with um, like a bone color, meaning like a cream color style pointy toe boot or whatever style boot, but just in the, the color cream. Now, as far as for bottoms, other than the lavender shorts that I have to go with it, this is exactly how I will wear it. I don't like this sweater with a darker color denim. I think only a lighter color denim looks right with this sweater only because the sweater is, it has a lot of pastel colors in it. So I just feel like the wash of a lighter denim just blends right in with the color of the sweater. So yeah, but I just wanted to show you all this sweater I love. And again, don't be afraid of color. Don't let, don't let anybody deter you away from color because it's fall and you gotta wear burgundy, brown, black, green. Girl, get you some color. I'm telling you now, if you can get your hands on this, do not wear this in 80 degree weather. Do not wear this in 70 degree weather. This particular cardigan is only to be worn in the colder months, ladies, because this cardigan is thick and heavy. You will blow up if you think you can make this one of those transitional ones. This is not it. <laughs> but this sweater, if you know, you know, was all the rage last year. I could not get my hands on this sweater prior to going to Nashville. When I was here in Atlanta, I had went to Zara at least twice to both Zara's. I'm talking about the Zara in Perimeter and the Zara in Lenox. Sold out online. This sweater was all the hype last year. And when I finally found it in the Zara in Nashville during Christmas time, and it was on clearance, I was not leaving this sweater. I was not leaving this sweater. I think it was regularly 129 and I got it for like 89 bucks. I still feel like, what, is that like $50 off? It still was a steal <laughs> with even being 90 bucks. Like this is a great timeless piece. I love, love, love the colors because it's given fall. But just like I was telling you with the previous sweater, it gives color as well. Like the yellow, the, the um, lavender here with the brown. I just think this is a great, great fall piece that will never ever go out of style the colors will never you know that you, you it just it's, it's just a timeless sweater i love the back and just to kind of step back to show you all how wide and big my jeans are look how good this sweater looks with a big wide leg jean it just looks like so classic it kind of gives off being a coat but it's not a coat but it just looks so good with a good pair of jeans. I think it just looks very mature. <laughs> it's vibrant at the same time. And it just, you don't need much. You already know. This is a classic, classic style cardigan. The Argot, the color, <laughs> the look of this sweater is a classic cardigan classy it has the classic colors the navy blue the gray the beige i will wear this sweater with a multitude of things first of all it looks okay with wearing it with a light color denim wash however because it has navy blue you can put on a navy blue or i'm sorry not navy blue but a dark wash jean and it will tie right in because the dark blue jean would then highlight the beige in the actual sweater. So this sweater is very universal. Now it is, um, it looks like it's thin, but it is quite heavy in like its stature. It is a heavy, as far as in weight, 
this is a heavy sweater. Now, I will say, if you want it to be a little risque, this is one of those sweaters where you can put like a bodysuit, like maybe a short bodysuit that comes to like right here, and you can wear it as you're looking like you're wearing it without a shirt, and it still, well, gives the illusion that you're wearing it without a shirt. So you, can, you have the option for that because it buttons up so high. But because, again, we're talking about the fall months, I personally would not wear this without anything up under it because my cardigans are strictly for layering. But I love this classic, traditional looking sweater. And I got this sweater for a steal from a small boutique in Panama City Beach, Florida. Y'all know everywhere I go. <laughs> I find somewhere to hit somebody's stores or shopping somewhere just to kind of see what people have. I don't stick to like the traditional places all the time. I just like to kind of dibble and dab if, you know, I see something. But this cute little boutique had this sweater for 70% off. 70% off. I think I might have paid like 15 bucks for this sweater, for this cardigan. And it is of great quality like the it is nowhere near cheap the color is absolutely gorgeous the weight on this sweater is phenomenal like this was strictly this was this was really a good buy this was definitely a good buy and you can't go wrong with it and I love if you have not noticed with the length of my cardigan I'm not really one of those people who like the cardigans that come like to the waist I do have like one or two actually I think I only have one I'm not really big on that. I feel like a cardigan should be cozy. So a lot of my cardigans are either oversized and long or just long. So that's just my little tip. -tip. Get into the sweater, y'all. Get into the sweater. <laughs> Get into this cardigan. I love this cardigan. Now, this cardigan was a little pricey. I think she was about $149. I bought her a couple of years ago from... Um, I got this a couple of years from Saks Off Fifth, but the uniqueness of it is what drew me to it. And I love the fact that it's long. I love the fact that it has like a pattern, but the pattern is just doing just enough. It's giving you the fall vibes, obviously because it is a cardigan, but also because of the darker colors. You can kind of mix and match what you want to wear with this. It went well. The majority of the time when I wore it, I wore it with a track suit because I feel like my longer cardigans, I like to wear them with active wear. So whether it be like a more neat fitted jogging suit or an actual active set where like it's like the tack, the tighter shirt with the leggings and then have the thumb holes coming through. I just think that look is just so cute, so classic, like in a sense of like girly and you just throwing a little like shoulder bag or even a crossbody bag and it just elevates the look. It's just, you know, just giving something that would probably be otherwise simple, just a little something. And if y'all haven't noticed, I'm just not afraid of patterns and colors and things like that. Like, I love these things. I feel like people kind of skip over the fact that patterns can be a staple in your wardrobe depending on what they are. I feel like they definitely have to be classic patterns. That's why if you notice, I go for like the Argos. This is army. This is an army fatigue. Like I can even, I would wear this with some army fatigue pants and a solid shirt and some and some um, combat boots. Like it, it's a classic pattern. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for cardigans and things like that. Classic, classic, classic. Let me tell you something about this cardigan right here. First of all, y'all, I've had this cardigan for at least 15 years, and I'm not exaggerating. I bought this cardigan when my youngest daughter was probably, she was either one or two, because I remember specifically going into the mall, Forever 21. That's when I feel like Forever 21 used to be popping with stuff that was unique. And I think I might have paid $40 for this cardigan. I know, I know. It's not everybody's thing. 
with all of the colors and all of the, you know, the shimmer and all of the stuff hanging. But when I tell you every single time I wear this cardigan, I get stares, I get so many compliments because first of all, this cardigan was way before it's time, way before it's time. It is a staple piece in my wardrobe. I This is one that I will never, ever, ever, ever get rid of. I love this cardigan, y'all. Like this is my absolute favorite cardigan. It goes with, I would say everything. Dresses, jeans, slacks, corduroys, I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all all the examples of the ways that I've worn them. Now, I've never worn it with like an active set or a jogging suit because I think it's just doing too much. But I feel like although it's like, although it's like busy in nature, I also feel like it's subtle because of the colors. The colors are very low key. Um, it's not like big. It's, I don't know, y'all. I just... This is my favorite, favorite, favorite cardigan. And I feel like if you can find a staple cardigan that has some kind of, that's a little bit dramatic, get it. Now I do need, I just noticed, I do need to cut this little, but just cutting this is just nothing, but get it. You always need like that one thing in your closet that is dramatic, that is, out of your norm, out of your comfort zone. I like to push myself when it comes to certain things. And I felt like even when I bought this, I was what, I mean, we talking 15 years ago, I was in my early twenties, mid to early twenties. And I loved, I love stuff like this. I don't buy as much of it anymore, but back then, how I used to dress, like I told y'all, like when I used to go to work and stuff like that, or when I stepped out, when I was like going out, going with my friends and we doing this and doing that, I was on my stuff. I don't really dress like that anymore, but some of the things are some of the pieces that I like, that I absolutely love, I will never get rid of. And this is one. So the last category is shackets. And that's with an S, shackets. It's a shirt and it could be worn as a jacket. As you see here, I have it buttoned up. So here I'm wearing it more of a style of a shirt. Um, and sometimes when I wear these, depending on how cold or, her hot, or how hot it is, I would just wear this without anything up underneath. Or I might just wear it with a tank top underneath just to kind of give like my back and my stomach you know, like chest area, some coverage when it's a little bit chillier outside. But then you can also open it, unbutton it, and boom, it gives a whole nother look. Now it's kind of like a jacket. So that's why I feel like shackets are a staple in your wardrobe. Doesn't matter the pattern, doesn't matter the color or anything like that. Of course, I'm always gonna tell y'all to go for the basics because these are just things that you can wear with multiple things because it is a jacket type of, you know, vibe, but it's still always good to have these type of things in your wardrobe because I'm from Detroit. So layering for me comes natural. When I was growing up, my mom used to make me put on an undershirt or a thermal shirt, my sweatshirt, or whatever sweater or whatever shirt that I'm gonna wear on top of that. Then I had my winter coat on, for my bottoms, I would do the same. I would have my long johns on. I would have my pants on top of my long johns. And sometimes depending on how cold or how much snow was outside, I would have on one or two pair of socks along with my winter boots that were insulated as well. So I'm used to the layering effect. Now the thing is, of course, now that I live in Georgia, we get chilly months, right? We get chilly days. I'm not gonna really say we have like well, I would say between January and February, we get into the 40s and 30s, so it's chilly. But we warm up sometimes in the afternoon, and for some whatever reason, of course, living here in Georgia, the sun feels different when it comes to the afternoon. So the part that's important for layering is that you can start shedding pieces off if you get too warm in the afternoon. 
This obviously is a little longer than the one that I showed you before, previous. So this one I feel like is more of a jacket style. It does have pockets. It does come down further, like I said, than the other one. But in order to make it look like a shirt, all you need to do is just button it up, put on a pair of black leggings. I would pair it probably with the black turtleneck underneath. If I didn't want to pair it with the black turtleneck underneath, you can even do a crew neck style shirt, leave the top button unbuttoned, button it from the, you know, the, I would say probably what, the second button down. And then, like I said, with some leggings, some knee high boots, or even a cute shoe boot, and bam, it's a shirt. But see how I'm wearing it now? You can wear it with, you can even wear it with some leggings. I'm not gonna wear leggings with it open, like that's just not me, girl. My stomach is not flat enough to do all of that. But I would, or you could, <laughs> you could wear it with some leggings or an active wear set. Now I will wear it with an active wear set. I will wear anything with an active wear set, y'all. But I will wear it with an active wear set if I wanted to wear it as a jacket, definitely, and have the thumb holes coming through just to give it, again, a little bit more of an elevated look. Or even if you didn't have an active set that, that had thumb holes, you can still put on an all black um, active wear set and run with it. Now this one is more like the first one I showed you. It's a little shorter. However, similar pattern, just a different color just having something neutral, you know, to kind of throw on with some jeans, y'all. I'm telling y'all, these little staple things are important to have in your wardrobe. Again, I, <laughs> I don't even know how many times I'm gonna say it again, but I actually gravitate when I, um, when I were buying, when I was buying these, I would gravitate towards, I like this particular pattern. I just think it's just a classic pattern that will never go out of style. So that's why you see like a lot of mine are more or less this pattern. So, yeah. <laughs> Y'all see where I'm going with this? I know I have them in a few different colors, but the pattern still stays the same when it comes to this style jacket. This one and the red one are the only two that have pockets. This one is kind of like its own length as well. It's not as short as the other two but it's not as long as the red one either. So you get where I'm going with this as far as these being transitional pieces that can be worn between different outfits in different ways, but doing the exact same thing. That's why I say things like this are staples to have in your wardrobe during the fall and even in the winter because you can do a lot with these because these are definitely on the thicker side, right? So let's get into, um, this last one, now the last one does not have pockets, or it may have pockets, but I know that it doesn't have buttons, but it still kind of falls in the same category as a jacket. The last two items are going to be unique pieces that I've never seen before, and this is the only thing that I have in my wardrobe, hands down, period, that I bought two of the same thing, but in different colors, because I knew that I probably would never see these again. They were a collab, they were a special collab. So that's the reason why. So the reason I put this one in the category as a jacket, even though obviously it doesn't have the same pattern as the ones that I showed you before, is because it does have pockets. It's not actually an actual jacket. It's not like an overcoat or anything like that. It's almost the same material as the other jackets that I showed you. Um, the colorway is obviously different. It doesn't really have like a necessarily a pattern but it does the same thing as far as the look so that's the reason why i said this is a jacket as you can see this one comes down long like that red one did it does not have buttons but obviously you see that it has pockets and for this i will wear either like a turtleneck underneath i will wear a sweatshirt underneath that has a mock neck because i just feel like it gives that more mature look that i like when i wear these I would also wear a button up white uh, shirt. I would wear, um, if I had to, I would wear just like a long sleeve mock neck shirt, just something, you know, kind of plain Jane. But I mean, there's a variety of ways you can like dress this up or dress it down however you choose. But it's just like, again, it's just an added layering piece for my girlies that like to layer, okay? Okay. These are like, other than that Forever 21 sweater that I showed you with like the fringes all over it, this 
and I have this in black are my absolute favorite, favorite pieces. These three are the top three things I love in my closet that I know I would not, absolutely, I would never get rid of. Clothing item wise, these will never go. This sweater and then it's almost like, like a bomber jacket material. So it's like this thick knit cardigan material. And then it's also like a bomber jacket style with the zipper. And it's like buttoned up in the front as like a cardigan. It is a, well, it was a collab with Barney's New York and Forever 21. I got this, where were we? I wanna say Forever 21 in Nashville during Christmas time last year. I had no clue about this whole collab, y'all. They had like a whole section. Now I'm gonna be real, real frank. I do not shop at Forever 21 like that at all. Every now and again, I peek my head in Forever 21 because I feel like Forever 21 is a little bit immature in a sense. It's not always my style. It used to be. And I'm not saying that I don't find pieces in Forever 21 because granted I do, but it's just not a store that I just, you know, go to frequently. If I'm in the mall and like I see one, I might go in there, but nine times out of 10, I'm not going to go in Forever 21 but I was with my kids during this time during Christmas and we were just kind of perusing through the mall. Of course, they're young, so they want to go on Forever 21. Went in there, they had a whole, they had coats, they had dresses, they had so much stuff, but these pieces spoke to me and I absolutely love them. Like, I absolutely love this jacket. I don't know what to call this. I'm calling it a jacket because I don't know what other name to give it. It's a bomber jacket on the sleeves and then it's a cardigan at the same time. I don't know what to call it, but I love it. So I can't tell you, you know, I'm, you may be able to find it on maybe like an eBay or a Poshmark. Um, I got it, like I said, during Christmas. So I got it heavily discounted. I think these were kind of on the expensive side too, as far as like being in Forever 21. But again, they are a collab with Barney's New York and Forever 21. If you are, you know, interested in these and you want to look for them, I guess that's the, that's definitely the way to, I'm not going to say, I guess I know that's the way that you would probably have to bring them up. Maybe like Barney's New York Forever 21 collab cardigan. I don't know, but these are a staple. It's like, I don't know what else to say. I love them. So let me show you it in black and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Exact same piece just a different color. And when I tell you these are the only two items in my wardrobe whatsoever that I got two of in different colors, I just couldn't, I've never seen anything like this. Like I love unique pieces when I find them and these were too. <laughs> so I was not leaving this. And again, this is the Barney's New York collab with Forever 21, right? Same scenario. It has like the bomber jacket sleeve and then it's a cardigan this one you can probably see it better it's probably coming up better on camera it has like I guess this is like a nylon material and then this one has the zipper on the sleeve the other one has a zipper too which I showed you but yeah so that's why I said it, it gives like bomber but yeah I love this so that is it y'all I think that's pretty much I have everything on my bed over there so just in case y'all wonder why I'm looking over here. But I think we've, we've already went through everything. I hope that you all see some inspiration. I got some ideas of how you can incorporate different style cardigans, different style jackets, different colors, different patterns into your wardrobe to collectively have a capsule fall wardrobe. And maybe I'm not using the capsule word right because honestly, I don't even really know what it means. I personally think... In my opinion, I think the capsule wardrobe is just things that you can wear with multiple things. So you have, you know, like multiple things that could be worn with multiple things. Is that a capsule wardrobe? All right, y'all. That is the end of episode three of Falling Into Fall. I hope you all were inspired. I hope you all enjoy. And the purpose for these videos, y'all, and I've told you all this before, is just for inspiration. It's just to give you ideas of how you can incorporate certain type of styles or certain type of things into your fall wardrobe. 
it's not necessarily like a haul or anything like that. It's just me showing you, okay, if you, if you have boots, you can have this style boot, you can have this color boot, or you can look for this style boot, or just like within this episode or how you can have different cardigans, but they look, you know, they're all different and they can all be worn differently. You can add color, you can add patterns, you know, that's all these series are about. Um, and the same as like episode one, episode one was kind of us getting into fall and it was more or less just giving you ideas of different accessories that you can add to your fall wardrobe, which aren't, which were not necessarily fall driven, but because we are talking about the fall season, you surely could have added those accessories or can still add those accessories to your fall winter wardrobe. So I hope you all have been enjoying them. Um, the next few episodes this is episode three we have another episode which will be all about um jackets jackets actual jackets blue jean jackets trench coats um jean and you you name it like different style jackets windbreakers things like that i'm also bringing you all a video because i know i'm not the only person that has a plethora of white button-up shirts I have a plethora of white button up shirts, but they're all different. And I want to show you some of the styles that I have. I may or may not, I have not decided whether or not I want to do a styling video with that because I told y'all these styling videos, when you're doing a styling video, like actually putting a whole outfit together, that takes a lot of time. <laughs> That's a lot of work. So I don't know. And I don't want the videos to all be so long either. But again, it's just for inspiration, y'all. Um, and then we're actually going to do our last video, which will be kind of like short and sweet, but it's going to be for fall inspired nails. If you've been watching my regular vlogs, you know that I've told you all that nails has been my thing since I was like 12 or 13 years old. When I was in like middle school, I used to do nails on my little TV stand for the girls in my neighborhood. Why I did not go to school for nails, I don't know. I've been wearing nails literally since my mama let me put on my first set of tips at 13 years old. And here I am at 44 years old. And one thing you will never catch me is without my nails. I need a fill in right now, which my appointment is tomorrow morning. But as far as me getting my nails done and having my nails done, that literally is something that I have. And I'm not even exaggerating y'all since I was 13 years old for the last 31 years, I have consistently been getting my nails done. You will never see me with just my regular, regular nails. I'm always going to have my nails. Now, these are actually my real actual nails, but I just get an overlay of acrylic over them. But as far as them being my nails, I don't have on tips or anything, but that's going to be the last episode. And then we're going to close that episode out with a fall inspired drink. Yes, a cocktail, an alcoholic beverage, because we all grown, right? So yeah, but again, I hope you all enjoy it if you have not subscribed. And if this is your vibe, if this series is your vibe, or if you want to take the time to watch my regular vlogs and you know, you just like what I'm putting out, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It would be right there. I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. I greatly, this last series um, with the shoes have gotten great, great, great views and I appreciate y'all because I was a little nervous about doing this because getting out of my comfort zone of doing regular vlogs is not easy for us people here that are on YouTube oh I'm I, I, let me not speak for everybody but for me I am new to YouTube I'm just really getting my actual vlogging off the ground getting my channel off the ground so vlogging is the main thing but I do want to start incorporating different series into my channel so that it's just not you know the same thing over and over and i really 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 appreciate you all for showing the love um giving me the views showing you know spending your time watching my videos i so so appreciate y'all so be looking out for episode four next wednesday and i hope you all have a blessed productive awesome and ble amazing week and I will see you next week with episode four of Falling Into Fall. And I thank y'all so much again for watching. Bye, y'all.